We're interested in finding out uh, in more detail um, the impact of blood pressure lowering with antihypertensives um, on a range of cardiovascular outcomes and on a range of patients. Um, and the rationale behind this is that we know quite a lot about what uh, blood pressure lowering does, its benefit, but uh, there have been a number of uh, key remaining questions. What has been uncertain, for instance, is who we should treat. Uh, does the effect of blood pressure lowering depend on the baseline blood pressure of the individuals, for instance, or does it depend on what background uh, conditions those people have and to which extent is this uh, modified by the type of drug that people take. And that was the key motivation for us to look at those questions in more detail to be able to clarify uh, who should be treated and, and when we should start treatment. I mean, what we found in the first was to confirm what previous studies had shown. We conducted a major meta-analysis um, identifying um, randomized patients, um, over 500,000 of those people, and what we found that obviously blood pressure lowering reduces substantially the risk of cardiovascular outcomes. Um, the important finding of the study was um, that the study showed that there was no evidence um, that those proportional risk reductions, those proportional effects on outcomes differed by the baseline blood pressure of, of patients. In other words, everything else being equal, um, if a patient's starting blood pressure was 140 and another patient's blood pressure to start up was, was 160 and in both patients the blood pressure was reduced by 10 millimeter mercury, the relative benefit that they gained was the same or there was no evidence that the benefit was different. And it's got, it's got quite important implications for clinical practice, um, suggesting that we should um, not put so much emphasis um, on a randomly selected target of blood pressure value when we start treatment and how far we go. So the focus should be on the risk of the individuals and trying to reduce that risk. And one way of reducing that risk would be antihypertensive medication, obviously bearing in mind um, potential side effects or um, inconvenience of taking those drugs uh, for individuals. So that was one key um, aspect of the um, study finding that has got implications. The other one was, um, does it matter? whether the patient has got a history of ischemic heart disease or stroke or diabetes or kidney disease. In other words, is this all about primary prevention or is the effect similar if you do secondary prevention? And what we found, again, there was no um, statistical evidence that the observed effects differed uh, based on the condition that you had. Um, and that simplifies, again, um, the clinical practice guidelines as to what, who should be treated. There were some differences, particularly among diabetes and people with kidney disease, but overall, uh, there was no suggestion that there is um, a significant difference. And the third key finding of the study was to look at um, the different drugs. Do different classes of drugs have different effects on different outcomes? And what we found was, yes, they do, uh, depending on what outcome you, you want to look at, for instance, um, drugs such as calcium channel blockers um, were shown to have a greater relative risk reduction on stroke, for instance, um, whereas um, you know, diuretics reduce the risk of heart failure more strongly, and beta blocker were you know, the weakest drugs comparing it to the, for those outcomes. Um, so you know, th those differences um, came out as well, which could help to fine-tune the recommendations for um, antihypertensive therapy. But the key message was um, that the baseline blood pressure of individuals um, is not a key determinant of the benefit that they gain, uh, assuming that there are substantial risk of benefiting from blood pressure lowering treatment.